Hello, folks. Brian Manzella right here. Coming to you today from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to talk to you about what really is supposed to go on in a good golf swing and why some people can do it and some people can't. And uh, maybe clear up a few misconceptions that you've had over the years that you've tried to play golf. This is my little trusty playing board. I've had it for a couple of years teaching golf all over the country, Louisville, Kentucky, and New Orleans, Louisiana mostly. And uh, the plane is the boss. The plane is going to tell you how the club really needs to work in the swing. And, and this is why this is. You're standing to the side of this golf ball, and you're stuck with the fact this club is on this angle. And I'm sure you can change angles, you can flatten them, and you can steepen them. But the club is going to return on some kind of angle, and hopefully it returns on the angle of the lie of the club at impact, or at least just past impact, because that's what's going to make the ball fly straight when the face is square when the ball leaves the face. Now, having said that, when the ball leaves the face, see, a lot of people don't know that. I would say 99.9% .9 of the people who play golf think that if you get this golf club to hit the back of that golf ball with the face absolutely square, that ball goes straight every time. I just hit a little pitch shot right here, and I'm not 100% sure, but it looked like I pulled that, and I did my level best to hit the back of that ball. Now, when we look at this on video, we may find out that you know I pulled it a little bit, but here's what happens when you hit a golf ball. When you hit the ball, the ball's on the ground or on a tee. It's not moving. <laughs> hopefully right and you're coming in with this club and when it hits the ball the ball starts compressing it starts actually deforming on the face of the club the ball doesn't really move very much but it stays on the face while the club is moving a half inch or so maybe a little bit more than that and in the process of that in the process of that half inch or so the club's moving because you're standing to the side of the ball I mean I'm not doing anything right here I got this club on my shoulder and I'm just holding this club face and and that club is opening to the camera it's squaring up to the target and you know closing to the camera and it's closing some more as I go through so for me to hit this ball straight I actually got to contact the ball with the club slightly open slightly open I remember way back when uh, I worked at a golf shop we had one of these Mitsubishi golf swing analyzers one of the very first in the country and I never forget because we had a net couldn't see where the ball was going and oh I got in that machine and I did my absolute best to make that ball you know just feel like it was dead solid and produce the numbers that shoot I mean I thought that the club ought to make the machine produce zeros <laughs> a perfectly straight path and uh, a dead square club base well I was all excited because it was a rainy couple days and I, I had got to the point where man, I mean, every shot was just zero 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 so I go out to the driving range City Park driving range in New Orleans where I've been teaching since I was 20 years old I'm 44 <laughs> long time 25 years of teaching and I get out there and I go okay you know I'm not even going to look until I hit a shot that I know in all my heart felt exactly like what I was doing in the net back at ProTech Golf in Metairie, Louisiana. And I can tell you, it only took me about two or three balls, young and skinny, and I got warmed up and I hit a couple shots that I knew were just exactly like what I was doing. So I hit the shot and I look up, the ball is going left to left. <laughs> oh no, the machine is defective or something. So, you know, it, it took me about 20 minutes. I hit probably 500 balls those two days in the net. It took me about 20 minutes to get to where I could hit the ball straight. And then I made sure and hit, I don't know, maybe, you know, another bucket and a half of balls because I was hitting it real good at the time and, you know, I, I kind of messed up with the machine. And now I had the opportunity to see, okay, now, let me see what I'm doing to make this ball go straight now because I know the adjustments I had to make to make the machine make zeros. And let me go back to the machine and see what numbers actually I think would have produced straight shots. It would have been easier to take the machine out to the range. <laughs> that, was too, that was too easy. I was always into whatever. wasn't very logical. So anyway, I um, 
I get on the machine, and again, two or three swings, I'm making the swing that I was making at the uh, driving range, hitting the ball straight, and I'm looking on the machine, and there it is, three degrees open. I'm going, well, the machine is defective or whatever, and it's not my machine. Stan Stopper, uh, the owner and Golf Pro, um, he bought the machine, and I'll just tell Stan, hey, Stanley, if you want to hit the ball straight, babes, you better have three degrees open. Little did I know, 1984, you know, I had the golfing machine book written by Homer Kelly for about two years, and, and it took me till 1987, almost 20 years ago, to go see Ben Doyle, the first authorized instructor to golf machine, and that was some pretty basic stuff, but Ben explained to me that, you know, there was impact when the ball actually contacted the face, and then there was separation when the ball actually left the face, and, you know, it didn't take a genius to figure out that you know, the club is basically always closing on a downswing, and then it squares up at some point, and then it, then, it, then it closes some more. And it didn't take me very long to figure out, well, you know, I had to hit the inside of the ball. Well, that, that leads to a couple of neat things that you need to know no matter whose system you're applying, whether it's a, another authorized instructor like the golfing machine, of the golfing machine like I am or... You know, a Jim Hardy one plane teacher, or Jim himself, or Jimmy Ballard, or Jim Flick having you swing your arms and hoping your body listens. <laughs> but um, here's the deal. Because of this very basic impact stuff, as this club is coming down the plane, it's coming into the ball, it's approaching the inside of this ball. I mean, if, if I'm a fly on this on this on this club head right here, I'm 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 not seeing the back of this ball. I got this ball lined up where the where the stripe is pointing same direction the plane board is, the target. The club as it comes down this plane, I'll get the ball a little closer to the plane so you can see what I'm talking about right here. As the club comes down the plane so that the, the, the shaft returns on the angle that the lie angle I just got adjusted, <laughs> my buddy Tom Bartlett did for me yesterday with the new, new set of tailor-mades right here, that the proper angle of impact, so here's this plane board that's going to produce, you know, the plane angle that's going to produce that, and if I was a fly or, you know, a little piece of mud that I got right here with, with a pair of eyes, as I'm coming down this board, I'm looking at the inside back of that ball. I am not looking <laughs> at the back of the ball. So really has aggravated me over the years that almost everything that I learned is absolutely true in the golf swing. I uncovered, you know, in some session at the driving range like I am here in Baton Rouge today, um, but I just didn't, I didn't have anything to apply, you know, that this cubby hole to put the information in. I, I, I learned it accidentally, stumbled on it, hitting balls, and just didn't know it. So, okay, so you need to hit the inside back of the ball. And, and just not only that, when this club bottoms out just past the ball, and I'm going to show you that in a second, the club is going to have to go back up the plane. So, you know, even today, you can watch a golf telecast and they say, you know, that Lee Trevino, he played his, he's such a great ball striker, you know, Lee Trevino, because he kept the club down that line longer than everybody else. The late Byron Nelson just passed away. He kept the club down the line. That's the goofiest thing. <laughs> you can't generate any speed with this thing. <laughs> it's club. If you're keeping anything on a straight line, it's all moving in a circle. And as soon as that club bottoms out, which if you're hitting a ball off the ground, is going to be the bottom of the divot. Hopefully it's in front of the ball, like, like a tour player, not like a 30 handicapper. The club's going to have to go up this plane, which is to back to the inside. So if you just knew those basic things, you're supposed to hit the ball on the way down. One of the first things I show people when I teach them to play golf, matter of fact, if you're a beginner, the very first thing I show you, I put three balls in a line right here. And I hit a shot, I'm just gonna hit a little pitch. And I show them, okay, let me put this ball where the other ball just was. There's a divot in front of that ball. I tell them, how did I do that? <laughs> I said, this is how I did it. I, my hands were forward at impact. 
and I hit the ball, and then I hit the divot, the, you know, made the divot, started tearing the divot. My divot bottomed out at the bottom of that divot. Club started going up and in after that. That is very basic. You go to a tour event, everybody's doing that. The club champion at your club, I'm sure, <laughs> does that. Every good player takes a divot in front of the ball. You got to go to a tour event after a tour event. <laughs> you go to a tour event site after a tour event, look at the driving range, man. They're taking divots. And so when you take this divot in front of the ball like that and you, and, you, know, you bottom out, there's only one way to do it. You have to have the shaft leaning forward. And to have the shaft leaning forward, you have to have your, your hands basically in a certain condition. You have to hit the ball on the way down. <laughs> you have to have the shaft leaning forward and you have to have your hands in a certain condition to do that. How you get there, that's where all this other stuff comes into. You keep your head in the middle of your feet. Or you let your head move like Jimmy Ballard used to teach, or steep shoulders like Jimmy Ballard likes, or flat shoulders like other teachers like. It doesn't really matter. You're just trying to influence this club head the best way you know how. That's what, in my opinion, the golfing machine is all about. It's the first and only book written with 24 components, 24 things you can do differently, so that by the time you pick all the options like uh, building a car at uh, at uh, you know Ford.com or something a new Explorer <laughs> you've got all these possible options of Ford Explorers you could build just a few quadrillion golf swings that will produce the correct alignments and one of these correct alignments is that the shaft of this club is leaning forward at impact so you can catch the ball on the way down now I know the first thing that that somebody's going to say, well, that's okay with an iron, Brian, but what about a driver? You know, my launch monitor says, okay, yeah, but what you're doing, <laughs> I'm supposed to be hitting up, <laughs> but, but what, what you're doing is you're actually, the only thing you have control over is this golf club, and you're actually swinging the grip end down, and the shaft has kicked forward like this, and it is actually hitting the ball on the way up, and that's how you get this optimum spin. I got this new tailor-made driver right here. It's a great club, and it has really good spin numbers for me, around 2,400. Ball goes really far if you get those numbers right. Well, that has a lot to do with this upward hit, but you're not trying to create this upward hit by, you know, since you're throwing this club head past your hands or anything goofy like that. This attempt by golfers to, you know, speed the club head up at the wrong time or pick the club or <laughs> pick the ball off the ground or get it up in the air when you're a beginner or you know better players who are not really understanding the plane and realizing that this club you know doesn't go toward the target all of these things you got to get them right <laughs> you got to get them right no matter what you do no matter what kind of swing you make you have to hit the ball on the way down you have to hit the inside back of the ball to make the ball go straight the club has got to be on a plane that's the three parts of the club the club head that's taken care of by this downward blow that you're trying to make with with the club head that's that's effective force I have a whole video on how to do that confessions of a former flipper one of number one selling videos of all time. You probably haven't even heard of it, but I sold a few thousand of them. BrianManzala.com. Go check it out. Uh, it's a good video because most people do two things wrong. They flip it. I'm telling you, I'm at a driving range right now, and those people are flipping it. And most people hit a slice. Most people have the club face wide open. Just so happen to have a video for that too. Never slice again. If this sounds like an infomercial, it's really not. Just to try to introduce myself to the great world out there on YouTube. You know, th these things are really basic things. You should have heard them all. And everything else I'm going to tell you on this little bit, you should have heard them a million times because they're just basic, basic to golf. But for whatever reason, the manufacturers who know this because they have, you know, high-tech cameras and high-tech uh, equipment measuring how to, you know, the make the club work the best possible way to get you to go buy an $800 driver like I got in that bag right there or or the uh, or the teachers who really do know you know what's going on and uh, you don't see a lot of that in the golf magazines and the golf channel and they don't want to put me on so you know I'm on YouTube now um, here's a, a couple of things about the poor person who has the club face open. This club face gets open. Could get open 
a bunch of different ways, but the basic thing is you either can grip it open. You got a grip that if it was in a you know a decent position would have the club face open. You have a problem. <laughs> if you make a perfect swing, it's gonna go over there. You could just have a perfect grip, you could open that club on the backswing, or you could open it too much on the downswing. And and, and never slice again, that's what I talk about. I talk about these are where the club face can get open. If you can find a way to keep that from happening, you're not going to slice it. Never, ever. And I think i got a great program for that. But other people do, too. Other people have good programs to stop the slice. But stopping the slice shouldn't have anything to do with fixing the fact that you, you come over the top of it or anything like that. All of those people coming over the top of it, they're coming over the top of it because... They don't want to hit it on the airline highway right here when they get a driver out. If they swung down this plane like, I, like I'm explaining to you that they're supposed to do and hit the inside back of that ball, if that face is 10 degrees open, that ball is going to start over here, you know, maybe 15, 20, 30 yards offline. It's going to curve another 20 or 30 yards offline, and, and uh, you're going to hit a car. You have a lawsuit on your hands. So those people are all trying to figure out ways to throw the club away and, and flip it and, and you know hang back on the right leg. They're all trying to do that to fix their slice. That's what Never Slice Again is all about. But these things are too basic, and, and the golf business isn't doing a very good job of it. So I'm going to try to do my best. I'm going to give a lot of stuff away for free here on YouTube, try to inform everybody on what you know really is supposed to go on in the golf swing. Now let me show you another one right here, the pivot. There's a lot of talk about the pivot, especially on my web forum at brianmanzell.com forward slash forum and some of the other big forums. I have one of the biggest on the internet and I'm very proud of it. It's a lot of work, but there's always arguments because the golf business <laughs> is a fragmented business. It's not like karate and ain't nobody arguing about flat left wrist in karate. You ain't breaking those bricks any other way, but no matter how many great players have a flat left wrist at the top, there's a bunch of teachers that want to argue that you ought to have a cup left wrist at the top. Now, trust me, you know, if you don't have a flat left wrist at the top, you go get you one. <laughs> Especially if you're a slicer, you're going to be a lot better off. But anyway, let's talk about the pivot for a second. Should you have your head dead still? Some people say even dead still in the middle of your feet. Something like that. Colin Montgomery, Fred Couples do it. So obviously you can do it. Or do you want to have a pivot where you pivot around something else? I like the back of my base of my neck but a point between your shoulder blades would work just as well. And you look a little bit more like this, the top of swing, where you can see where my head actually moved a little bit. But this little dot right here, <laughs> that didn't move. There are two options. There are probably more options than that. But here's my, here's my feeling on this. I'm pretty good at throwing a Frisbee. I spent a lot of time throwing Frisbees when I was a kid. And I can tell you that if I stood here left-handed to throw this Frisbee, I don't know that keeping my head dead still in the back pivot would help me throw that frisbee very much. I think, you know, I'd turn around my spine. I think if you went to the Saints camp, Airline Highway right here, you take it about 70 miles this way, maybe not that far, probably about 50 miles from here, 55 miles from here, you wind up at the Saints training camp, you go get whoever the best five athletes on the team that have never had a golf club in their hand, probably most of them have, but let's just say you can find a few, you put a blocking dummy right here. This is the blocking dummy today. And you say, okay, Reggie Bush, never had a golf club in your hand. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand here like this, and I want you to backhand that board as hard as you can. Now, I'm going to just pretend I fancy myself to be a pretty decent athlete. I'm going to pretend I don't know anything about golf. I'm just going to hit this blocking dummy like I got Coach Muse from Shalmet High, Hal Howell, and I'm going, Manzelli, hit that thing, kid. So I'm going to hit it right now. Bang! I can guarantee you I hit it pretty hard, and if you watch my head, my head probably didn't stay perfectly centered in the middle of my feet. That's what you're trying to do with your pivot. You're trying to create speed. That speed's got to get to the club head. And if you stand there and worry about where your head is, I don't think you're going to be very successful. We'll talk about that as I do more episodes of this little show. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about today is setting up to the ball correctly. It's really not that difficult or that, in, or that important to do some of the things you hear all the time. Basically, the ball's on the ground. You have to find a way so that this swing you're making, you know, goes to the ground. And, and you know, 
bend over. Those people that, that come to see me for a lesson, they're standing up like this. And it, it's, it's not going to help them very much because, you know, what happens is that the rotation that they're creating from the pivot's going to want this club to sort of rotate around their spine more or less. Like, a, like if I had a rope and a string and I was whirling that rope and string around, it's going to pretty much rotate somewhat 90 degrees around this axis. Bend over so you can reach the ball. Other thing, this is being taught a lot more now than it was 25 years ago when I started teaching, but here's the new pop thing that drives me crazy. I've had video cameras for a long time. I'm videoing this with probably my 30th camera. I, I, I'm a gearhead. But when people started drawing lines, they thought this looked good. This is a convoluted, funky position right here. I see some really good players doing it. Their back is straight and their head is straight. Well, you know, my eyeballs are looking this way right now, so I have to look down my eyes to see this ball. And what all these players, Adam Scott being one of them, do is on the downswing they just they just find this correct position and they hit the ball that way. Look out of your eyeballs at the at the golf ball. So what's gonna happen is your back should be pretty straight from your tailbone to near your shoulder blades and then it should start rounding forward from there. Because you want to get yourself in this situation where you can you can hit the ball on the way down. Because that's what we're trying to do. So Let's kind of review today what we what we talked about. Because of the way this golf club is designed, and you're standing to the side of the ball, and you're, this club's always going to open and close, no matter whether there's extra rotation, which always almost always is. But let's just say there wasn't. I'm just holding on to this thing and pivoting. You can see how it's opening and closing. The ball sticks to the club face, so you got to hit it before it gets to the bottom of the swing and before it gets square. If you remember the three ball drill that we did. We got three balls in a row. That club sticks to the that club sticks to the face. So we gotta catch that ball on the way down for two reasons. One, because we gotta catch it before it squares up. And two, we gotta catch it before it gets to the bottom of the swing. So we can hit down on the ball. Good players mash the ball better than bad players. And one of the ways you do that is you you have this club head traveling downward when it hits the ball and it and and whatever amount of loft is on the club and how far forward leaning this club is is going to have a lot to do with how much compression you're going to get and how much distance you're going to get so you you can bend over the right amount you catch the ball on the way down try not to open this club face wholesale in the backswing <laughs> i mean you know if i could just tell everybody in golf two things that I think that everybody did this, everybody that saw this video, if everybody who played golf just did these two things, get your heel pad, this little thing right here on top of the grip, for crying out loud, every good player in the history of golf has had their heel pad on top of the grip like this. Get your heel pad on top of the grip, get a, le a left wrist that's flat at the top. I don't care what that club face looks like. I got an accidentally really strong grip right here. My left wrist is flat, that club face is pointing to the sky. They got teachers that will go, oh my God. And I might fix it too at some point if you can already hit the ball left. But if you're a slicer, you get that heel pad on top and you can do it with an absolutely neutral grip like a Tiger Woods or Jack Nicklaus and get a flat left wrist at the top, learn to hit down on the ball. And I'll see you on the internet real soon, either right here at YouTube or at Brian Manzella. That's B-R-I-A-N-M-A-N-Z-E-L-L-A dot com.